Here we go. It is the Vol Report brought to you by Bassey Lawn and Garden. Man alive. It's worth the drive. Toro, count on it. And this guy right here is following in my footsteps. It was about, it, it was about, tw I'm just saying, I'm just oh, okay. saying it was 25 years ago. I went to my first SEC media days. Yeah. And Tennessee won a national championship. Hey, okay. there we go. Okay, so you're going to your first SEC media days. So let's go ahead and get the ring sized. <laughs> might as well, dude. You might as well. Congratulations, buddy. I, I it's it's it is. I don't know if it's an enjoyable honor. You like talking to the media, so you'll be good. But it is an honor to be chosen among three players, you along with Joe Milton and uh, Amari Thomas, that will be there and uh, be representing your entire team uh, yeah. in front of. About 500 media members. Congratulations. Yeah, thank you. I definitely think for sure someone that enjoys talking to media and enjoys talking about myself and about my team and my friends, um, <clears throat> definitely a great opportunity. And I don't know, when you say it like that, right, like I am representing Tennessee, right? I'm representing my team, you know, my friends, I'm representing my family, you know, personally, representing myself and my future, but also just representing just Tennessee in general. So um, it's definitely an honor, definitely very cool. SEC Media Days is like a huge thing for people like me because yeah. it's kind of the unofficial kickoff. You get to interview all these guys and as fellow media members as well. Back in the day, was was it a big thing to you? Was it something you were aware of throughout college as a player? Um, I think once I got a little bit older um, and kind of stepped into you know somewhat of a leadership role, I guess on the team within my position group, all stuff. It was, it was something that I really wanted to be able to do. I wanted to be able to do it last year, and obviously it didn't didn't work out, didn't happen. They took other people. Like that's great, it's fine. Um, but the fact that I'm you know blessed and able to do it this year is definitely a big accomplishment. And kind of shows just you know what I mean to the university, what I mean to this team. Um, so definitely, yeah, something I've been aware of for the past few years as I've been more um, aware of just how media works and and the honor that it is to go do it. So you are welcome anytime it's 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 live to work in. You know, I'm, I'm if somebody asks you about speaking in front of public, does it make you nervous at all? You can say, no. Through my work with Off the Hook Sports, I've I've been more and more comfortable yeah. in, in the past That's year. You want... <laughs> <laughs> Just drop a, drop a little drop a little uh, old promo in there for the for the channel. <laughs> Take it absolutely. Uh, no, but again, in all sincerity, congratulations! It's pretty awesome. They couldn't have made a bigger choice. Are the, uh, a better choice? Are there any nerves at all? Because somebody, and it's not going to be you, because you're so smooth. Okay. Somebody's going to say something stupid next. For week. sure, right? It's going to take off. Are there any nerves that you might slip up or something? No, I mean I've I've done it for a while, right? And I and I do it a lot. I do it. You know, I've gotten pretty good at kind of understanding what people are really asking, right? Because half the time, you know, someone might ask something and really be asking something completely different, right? And so if you're unaware of, of you know, how things work and, and um, you know, kind of, I don't want to sound crazy, but like the climate of what's going on, right? Like I'm completely aware that going into this, they're probably going to ask me about quarterbacks. They're probably going to ask me about defense. They're probably going to ask me about, you know, new tight ends, right? So these are things that I've fully prepared to, to speak about and, and give my – true honest two cents on but obviously like never gonna you know bash my teammates never gonna bash another team because that's how you get put on <laughs> you get put on a poster pretty quick about that too so um just kind of learning from what other people have done in the past and kind of made some mistakes and trying to avoid that at all costs trying to just maintain a, a smooth level head and, and understand that i'm there for a purpose and um surely nobody's gonna try to take advantage of me right i don't give i don't give off that um that vibe that you I'm someone that you're trying to get information off of, but I don't know. We'll see. I'm definitely super excited to see all the different questions, all the different people meet a bunch of people. I think that's going to be a big opportunity too, is just meeting people. Right. And just um, kind of getting my face and my name out there in front of a lot of different, you know, platforms and different, uh, a lot of people's shows and in different, you know, um, whatever it is. And so just very exciting, very good opportunity. It's, it, it's, it's a weird thing. You're going to be asked the same questions about 5 million yeah. times. How, I mean, when you get through, I mean, goodness gracious, I'm there for four days and I'll be ready to get out of there, but you'll be there for about four hours. I would think yeah. at what point do you think you might say, wow, I've answered this question 28 times. Um, 
I don't know. If somebody asked it the wrong way, I might have to let them have it. But <laughs> usually, I'm, <laughs> usually I'm pretty good about not snapping back at people and not, you know, just kind of being respectful of the question. I understand you. Maybe maybe you didn't hear me say it earlier, so I'm gonna repeat it for you again. But um, yeah, comes with it, man. It's part of it. And you get a lot of people that ask the same question different ways, right? And so they're just trying to bribe, trying to get different answers, and trying to get something they can hold on to and write a story about. So I understand it. I get that. It's their job. It's your job. So. Oh, the problem is. It, you'll be in like five different settings. Right. So, so some people haven't heard that question asked or answered. Or so they're answered. being legitimately curious. Right. That's right. the problem. Yeah. And so there, why, why, how can I be upset with you about that? If, if you, <laughs> you, I mean, you know, you have no excuse, right? Like there's nothing wrong with it. So just got to roll with it and just be ready for it. Obviously it's going to happen. So it is funny how the smallest things can turn into something Joe yeah. Milton, who, who will be there, Tennessee yeah. starting quarterback this season, who everybody knows, was at the Manning Passing Academy, and he said something to the effect of, I don't lose in the state of Florida. I like to lose in the state of Florida. That's why I played so well against Clemson. I'm going to go ahead and tell you, I've talked to some people, that got some play in Gainesville. Yeah, probably not necessarily something <laughs> amazing to say. But listen, this is a thing. This is how it works, man. If you back it up, we go down there and we win, and we and we do it, you know, handle our business, then – Sure. Yeah. Say it all you want. Right. So, um, you know, that's just the thing, man. When you, when you say that and you have to expect to go down there and, and handle your business and I'm, I know Joe expects to do it. So that's why he said it. If he didn't expect it, he wouldn't have said it. So, um, yeah, obviously you kind of got to watch your mouth here and there, but sure. Talk all you want, man. As long as, as long as we're winning the games and it'll be all right. You guys aren't scared of anybody and you shouldn't be. Yeah. This is, this is, you and I are having a way different conversation than we were a year ago. For sure. Right. Because I, some people say, like, is that deserved? Right? Sure. I think, I mean, dude, we went out there and we we played our game, our, our style of football, and we, and we did it really well. Number one offense in the nation and, and, and proved that we can't hang with anybody. And, you know, now we sit here very confident, very fully expecting to have another really good season. And I think that, you know, that's the difference. Coach, Coach Hype talks a lot about how there's different types of teams, right? There's teams that, that hope. Right? and they have no chance, right? There's teams that believe that they can win. And I think for a long time, Tennessee, you know, this team, teams that I've been on have believed, right? We believe that we're a good team and that we're, you know, in a place that we can, you know, be successful. But last year, that team expected to win. This year, this team expects to win. And we have the full capability to do and go out there and win every single game. And so with that expectation comes the preparation to actually meet those expectations rather than just kind of having these lofty dreams, these lofty thoughts that, Oh, maybe we can be on that way. Maybe we can do this. Like, no, like we all truly believe we're going to walk down there and we're going to expect a win. So, you know, that, that is the difference between you know where we were years ago and where we are now for sure. I want to ask you about how much coaching maybe you, you get, or if you get any, I mean, you don't need any coaching, but it's brought to you by Bassy Lawn and Garden. <laughs> <laughs> No, do not. <laughs> okay, go ahead. Sorry. Talk to that, Vassy Lawn and Garden. Here we go. That's right. Go to Vassy.com to learn more. They've got the industrial and the commercial mowers where you can come from Knoxville, Nashville, or Chattanooga. They're in Cleveland, Tennessee. They'll save you thousands because of their buying power. So uh, Vassy Lawn and Garden again, Vassy.com. So do you do you get any coaching? Do, do people maybe the sports information directors of the world like Bill Martin? Do you, do, do they do they tell you anything, or or do you just or do they know you well enough where they say go get it, Jacob? So yeah, we have meetings, right? Especially whenever something like this is about to happen, <clears throat> you get trained and you get told, hey, these are the questions that you're expected to be able to answer, or these are the questions that we want you to stay away from. These are the questions that are going to try to trap you. Like this is how you get out of it. Um, make sure you're doing this, make sure you're sitting up, make sure you're making eye contact with people, make sure these are a lot of different things that, you know, the people that are going already know, right? J me, Joe, Amari have been trained in media, understand how it all works. We understand, you know, like I said earlier, when people are trying to get something out of you and we understand how to deflect questions and, and like kind of navigate it. Um, but yeah, still, you still get coaching just because it's, it is such a big, such a big stage, right? It's such a big moment. And, a lot of a lot of eyes and a lot of things going to be written about it. So, um, yeah, I mean that that's kind of just part of it. But. It it officially and it's partly getting back from vacation. And thanks for Caleb Calhoun for filling in last week. But partly yeah. getting back from vacation and media days is here. It feels like football season to me. And I realize that being said, it's mid July. Yeah. But when does it 
feel like football season to you? Are we there or is it more like practice? No, we're not there yet. I don't think for me, like it feels um, definitely still feels like the preparation stage. And in, in my head, like we break this year up into quarters, right? Just like a football game. First quarter is your, your winter conditioning season. Um, therefore, like there's no ball there, right? Like no footballs, no tackling, no, no pads, anything. Second quarter is spring ball, um, spring training. Um, third quarter is this period of time where we're in the summer, we're conditioning, it's hard, it's hot, like you got to grind it out, prepare yourself for fall camp. Fall camp's kind of third quarter as well. And the fourth quarter is the season, man. That's when you go finish. That's when you go and, and truly show what you've, what you've been working on. So I think that, you know, once you kind of hit that, we'll call it the end of the third quarter, right? So end of fall camp, you know, we're kind of wrapping it up and things are starting to look more towards, okay, first opponent, who are we, who do we got, where are we going? Let's start installing plays. That's when you like truly like that's when it starts feeling like this season for me. And like really when it comes up, I try to not think of it any other way because I don't know, man, it's just if I think about it too much, I'll get too excited. I'll get too like amped up about it. There's nothing I can do about it right now. Bring it down. Bring it down. Bring it down. There's nothing I can do about it right now. Right. We don't play the game until September. So like what is me getting all excited for right now? Have anything to do with it? Not sure. I can let it motivate me and prepare me and and make me go harder in the gym and all these things. But um, yeah, it's still the third quarter. We'll worry about the fourth quarter when we get there. Okay. So I'll bring it down a little bit. So how excited are you about Omari Thomas this year as he was selected to SEC media days? I mean, I guess he deserves it. I don't know. <laughs> you don't have to bring it down. Yeah, no, he deserves it, man. He's awesome. Um, Amari is one of those guys that, you know, not under the radar at any means, right? I think he makes a lot of plays and, and is a very big part of our defense. But just D-line in general and offensive linemen for the most part uh, don't get a lot of, of attention from the media, from the, from fans, from, you know, social media, all that stuff. So it's cool to have somebody like him who has done a lot of work. Um, I don't know if you, if you know this, but he's on our – um, like our, I guess our, our black student athlete committee, right? So for African Americans, they have a lot of different things that within the school, they have a committee that comes together and tries to work on, you know, solutions for different problems that we face or different things that, you know, we see that are issues that, that need to be addressed and um, does a lot of, you know, just work, right? As an advocate for, for the other black colored student athletes. Um hmm. So, man, has done a really good job of, of using his voice and of using his, his really sharp brain and, and being able to um, solve problems for, for himself and for others and, um, you know, be really respectful, be really, you know, intelligent and uh, be able to communicate really well. Um, he's the best at it. So I think that a lot of people will see that when we go. You know what I mean? A lot of people will kind of realize that that maybe didn't before, uh, but he does a really good job. So. You know, it's funny. I, I remember seeing Hendon Hooker when he walked out of the SEC Media Days last year and the first person he talked to was the commissioner there's the greg sankey standing there and they have a conversation and i took a picture and it went crazy viral because everybody's excited about football season and i i thought to myself at the time hendon seems like a quiet guy i didn't really know him at the time i thought he he might not be comfortable as it turns out he was like 110 percent comfortable oh my god yeah 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 <laughs> he, he, it was like nothing to him yeah, right and I remember still to this day, he was the only person, by the way, you, you could probably pimp products if you wanted to. But the thing he brought out was his, his spiritual comic book, which I thought was so cool. Eventually, yeah. everybody's got, I think, going to bring stuff and mention their advertisers. That's For just sure. right. that's the way it happens in the Super Bowl. Yeah, you have to. Right. <laughs> but I think at Joe Milton, I think now nah, he's not going to have any issue whatsoever because i think he's comfortable in the spotlight whereas i had the questions about him and i was wrong yeah i'm still pretty certain that joe's comfortable in the spotlight no question about joe man that is that is joe and that's what makes him him and he's not man like yeah he might be you know flashy at times you see him doing backflips all the time like he loves the camera he loves oh yeah dude backflip is he gonna backflip dude oh gosh dude he might backflip in his suit no, I'm just kidding. He won't do that. But yeah, man, like, so like the <laughs> most comfortable in front of people, man, like, but is, is also a really good communicator too, like, and, and really handles himself well and understands when it's time to be serious, when it's time to, you know, kind of goof around or whatever, make jokes. But um, yeah, no questions about, about whether Joe's ready for the spotlight or not, I don't think. So what are you going to, what are you going to wear? Have you thought about that? It's a secret, man. It's a secret. No, it's a kidding. secret? No, nothing crazy, dude. I, I like to, you know, especially stuff like this. I like to look clean. I like to look well put together. That's um, the word. You just use the word clean. Okay. Yeah. That's what you, 
like when you get drafted like in the third overall pick yeah you're not gonna see me nothing crazy i'll be looking i'll look uh clean (laughs) clean yeah so like 20 years from now you don't want to look back and say the bright orange suit he overcame that to be a hall of famer in the nfl exactly you want to set the bar low just make sure hey i'm here don't worry about it i look good i'm clean don't worry about it i'm not gonna be all flashy but i'm gonna look good i'm gonna be clean and i'll have some nice things on you know but um definitely you know i had to shout them out mark nelson mark nelson um Marcus Hall is his name, whatever. Does some work in, in Knoxville, and he's hooking hooking me up with a suit. So it'll be good, man. I'm excited to kind of show it off and and and, and look good for the weekend. See, you're already changing the game because that's all the Super Bowl is about. It's Joe Namath comes up and he'll say, "Hey, I'll do your show, but I need to be sure and mention, um, I don't know, the uh, AARP or Ben Gay or something like that." Yeah. So you've already got the shout out. You right. can do that down there. Exactly. I probably will. <laughs> With the suit or your podcast. I'm just saying. You know so, <laughs> <laughs> hey, so the news, a serious note, Trey Flowers was there last year. Man, yeah. And the news coming out, mm-hmm. um, correct, if I'm pronouncing this wrong, correct me, but myositis that he had been he had been dealing with that not yeah. only affected maybe the end of the season, also affected his ability to participate in workouts leading up to the draft, and I'm sure affected him where – uh, he fell on draft boards. Uh, yeah. How long did you know that he had been going through something like that? So none of us really knew kind of what it was, right? We all knew something was up, right? We all knew that maybe he was hurt or maybe it was, you know, a sickness of some sort or illness or whatever it was. And um, he did a good job, man, of, of staying in it, staying engaged and just continuing to be around around his friends and around his brothers. And uh, I'm sure there was quite a few that knew what was going on, just the ones that were really close to him. I'm not the closest to him. Like, obviously, we're buddies and stuff. And, and if I were to ask him, he would tell me. But, um, yeah, man, is is something that he kind of comes out with and everyone's just like, wow, like, that's exactly what was going on. And, and, you know, again, like you could tell, right, he wasn't playing, wasn't working out, wasn't doing a lot of the things that you normally would do. And so, um, yeah, man, it stinks. But I think that I loved his post because – um, you know, he talked about it, explained what it was, explained how, kind of how it affected him and was just like, look, man, like this is just what God has given me right now. Right. This is exactly the trial that he's given me. And, he, you know, I'm his toughest warrior. Right. So that's what he said. He said it gives his toughest battles to his toughest warrior. So uh, he'll be fine, man. He'll, he'll, he'll get through it. And I know he's obviously recovering and stuff and trying to figure out what that means for him and um, whether he is super successful in football or not. Like he'll be successful regardless of, of what he does. And that's always how he's been. So. Um, obviously prayers up for him, but yeah, kind of a, a, a sad situation there. Yeah. I, I thought that he was one of the most underrated players oh, yeah. last year because I felt like he may be covered for some deficiencies in other places. So I've always been a big Trey guy. I mean, the kid started since pretty much the day he stepped on campus. Kid played the most snaps of probably just about anybody on our team. And I don't know. Yeah. Like you said, so underrated, like people didn't really see or say a lot about him, but Obviously, he was at media day, so he meant enough to the coaches to be able to go and represent the team. So, when 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 did you notice? And it's uh, again the Vol report with uh, Jacob brought to you by Bassie Lawn and Guard Man Alive. It's worth the drive. Toro count on it. When when did you notice that maybe he wasn't a hundred percent? Um, I mean, it was. I don't remember exactly what game or when it was, but it was late last season. Obviously, when he started dealing with it and and wasn't able to participate in some of the things, and you know, you just kind of staying around him, being like trying to be supportive and stuff. But um, like I said, no one, not a lot of people really knew what was going on. We all were just kind of trying to, trying to be there for him. But yeah, I mean, you notice pretty, I guess late last season is is kind of when everybody started to realize that something was, was off. Can you believe it's going to be your last football season? I'm going to ask you like 15 times because you've got to be a friend. And can you believe that? It's kind of crazy, man. It it was, it's weird because I sit here thinking that truly thinking that, you know, last year was going to be my last one right and so now it's i'm sitting here and like oh, another opportunity right and and man nothing no holding back right we're we're going out and we're doing as much as we can to man just have the best season we can and hopefully that it won't be my last actual football season it'll just be my last one for the, for the vols but um yeah man super cool super excited Okay, so if you can, make a little mental notes because I want to ask you after SEC Media Day is the dumbest question. And we won't out anybody, okay. but make yeah. little mental notes of, man, Dave's going to laugh out loud. And yeah. uh, I, I, and 
is there is there anybody any show that you want to be on can can i text paul feinbaum right now and do you want to be on his show is there any show that you want to be on that i can maybe grease the wheels man i don't know i i kind of going into it thinking i probably won't be like asked to do many of the extras like many of the just the you know other things and just the normal guys don't get to do but we'll see what will kind of falls in my lap my mom said something about one of the one of the media guys that her and my dad like that they think is really good. And she was like, if you see him, make sure you're really nice to him. And you answer all his questions. Really. I'm like, mom, I got it. Like, who is it? Do you I remember? Forgot, his? I forgot his name, man. She told me it's a bald dude, um, which that might not help you. That's um, probably Paul. That's probably Paul fine. No, it's not Paul fine. Okay. It's, <laughs> it's a younger dude. I know Paul fine <laughs> okay. younger dude. He's bald. Um, good energy. He, he, he does a show. It's not just about Tennessee either. It's not all sports or all college football. Okay. Um, if you think of it, I probably got his number on my phone. I'll see what I can do. I and uh, well, they don't. They don't. Your your parents don't like him more than me, do they? Of course not. No. Right. Thank you. There's like tears, right? Then it's you up here, and then like everybody else, Thank and you. then some people down here. Very. I'm a yeah. very. I'm a very <laughs> needy individual. <laughs> right. <laughs> he is Jacob Warren. He's going to be at SEC Media Days. He's going to give us a recap. And I think he just answered basically all the questions that he'll be asked, or he's done so yeah. in this podcast at some point. So you need to click that like button, subscribe, and turn your notifications on because we love Jacob. Jacob Warren, SEC Media Days, pretty fantastic. To me, it's going. To Jacob, not quite, but we're there. This has been a presentation of Off the Hook Sports.